what's happening, man? We're back with a new edition of King Penny's podcast. This is episode number three. Hey, great weekend. A lot of stuff happening around town uh, this week. Hey, so we had uh, Father's Day. I want to say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers, man. Hey, hope y'all got more than breakfast, a tie, and a screwdriver. Hey, you put that together. Uh, we also had a Juneteenth celebration here in Longmont. We had two separate events that the city put on. One in uh, Roosevelt Park that was uh, during the day that was amazing. They had bands out there. They had uh, vendors, man, food trucks. South African food truck was amazing. Um, and also one in the evening at uh, the Longmont Theater where they had comedians. Uh, they had a, a music group, uh, The Reminders. Um, so shout out to the city council member who put that on, uh, the city of Longmont. I uh, saw the mayor there, looked great in the, uh, the uh, rainbow uh, shawl. It's amazing. Uh, also, to the Nuggets won the championship. Here we go, Nuggets. Hey, man, should sure, give them congratulations. Sup? Hey, look, and I realize I've been a hater for a while, you know, but I'll go ahead and own that, and I'll take that L right here in front of you guys, man. Hey, good job, Nuggets and the fans. You guys can keep on talking, man. At least till football season come around. <laughs> That's a whole other story, man. So let's kick it uh, right into the episode and stuff like that. Hey, we have a high energy guy, man, here today. You might have seen him on Instagram, uh, the real estate hippie and stuff like that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Mr. Noah. Hey, Penny. Thanks for having me on today. Much, hey, much appreciated, hey, my friend. I appreciate friend. you finding time, man. That's, I know it's hard. Hey. I know it's really hard. Is what it is. Yeah. So first thing I want to talk about, let's get uh, the name and where you're from. Uh, my name is Noah Inhofer. I am, well, I'm from all over the place, uh, born and raised in the Midwest, uh, South Dakota, met my beautiful wife there. Um, while I was in college, I got an opportunity to go be a professional mixed martial artist. So we relocated to Iowa with the uh, Militage uh, Elite Fighting Camp there. Uh, we moved from one cold place to another cold place. And my wife was like, hey, when I'm graduating from college, we're done with this. So we spent nine years in Hawaii and uh, then just recently relocated here to Longmont, Colorado about three years ago. So you guys have uh, children? Do. I've got a six-year-old daughter, Waverly. She's beautiful, fantastic, and spitting fire. And I have a very sweet little boy named Ziggy, who is three. Hey, man. Happy Father's Day, Hey, thank way, you. Man. Thank you. Out, get that out of the way and stuff like that. So the main thing we want to discuss right now we want to figure out what it is that you do. You know, that's a good question. Um, I do have the, the, the title realtor, right? Um, or real estate agent or real estate broker. And at the end of the day, man, what I do is simple. I solve problems and I help people. Okay. Okay. So you work on more of the commercial side or the resident? I do commercial and residential. I've helped several businesses out, um, over the last few years, you know, find a place to do business, make sure it's the right area, has enough traffic. All that stuff is great. But really what I found out that I love to do is help families and help people uh, build wealth using the power of real estate. Man, that's super cool, man. That's super cool. How long have you been doing this? So I bought my first investment property like 14 years ago um, and got into real estate through uh, investment, uh, Airbnbs, flipping houses, uh, rentals, all that stuff. And then <clears throat> the real estate agent that I was working with uh, irritated me. And um, so I just took it upon myself. Hey, if you got a problem, solve it. Got my own license and then realized that I can help people. And that like really fuels me, makes me sleep good at night, gives me energy. When you're doing flips and you're doing all that stuff, you know, it doesn't really help anybody. And it's fun. It's exciting. There's danger. You're, you know, you're putting all your money into it. But at the end of the day, it's like I do that house, I flip it, I sell it. And I really don't get the same enjoyment, uh, personal enjoyment, that feeling of, hey, I did something good in the world today from doing that. So doing residential real estate, helping people, you know, sell a property, you know, you might like the world is crazy. Crazy stuff happens. There's a death in the family. You're going through a divorce. Uh, you're downsizing because kids took off to college. Uh, you're upsizing because you 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 know you you did good. Your your income went up. Your house is too small. You lived there for seven years. You're sitting on a bunch of equity. Man, I just help people in every conceivable way possible. Um, in real estate, the actual <coughs> excuse me, actual homes, you know, they're just homes. But it's the people that live in them that 
that fuel me. Facts. Nah, that's cool. Because I think if I'd interview most realtors, I, I think, or real estate agents, I would ask how many bodies you got. Like, how many houses have you sold? That's, like, like the excitement, the glamour of it, I guess, you know, that everybody sees on TV. But they don't hear the real stuff that you're saying, that you just want to do it for the community, you want to help people, and, and the, the, the rush that comes with that. Everybody sees the, the go, 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 sell this, flip that right quick, patch this up, let's get it out of here, versus the actual, the actual real process. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny because I got invited to go speak at this event, and they, they invited me because of my production. Um, they called me up and they said, hey, what was your production last year? And I, I, I was like, hey, I, I can look it up for you. I don't know. Well, hey, what do you mean you don't know? You don't know your, you, you don't know your numbers? No, I don't. But I can tell you every single person by name that I helped That's during that year. That and apparently they didn't like that answer because I got uninvited. <laughs> hey, right quick. Hey, this guy, man. It's all right. So, so outside of that, right, what is the day-to-day of a real estate agent look like? It's going to look different for everybody because, you know, here's the thing is what most people don't know and don't understand is like real estate's literally the Wild West. You can... If you have a buyer and seller, you have two parties that agree on a contract, you can write that contract a million different ways. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. There's no, uh, you know, hey, here's how you do this. No, there's an infinite number of ways that you can put it together. Um, so my day-to-day probably looks a little bit different than most people's day-to-day. My day-to-day is like, hey, who can I contact? How can I reach out to people to allow them to understand that the sole reason I am here is not to sell them a house? I'm not a salesman, all right? That's the thing, is there's nothing I can say to somebody to make them sell their home. There's nothing I can say to somebody that's gonna make them buy a house they don't wanna buy. So at the end of the day, I'm here to consult with people. I'm here to have people lean on me. Um, You know, I'm a strong guy mentally, physically, uh, emotionally, spiritually. And I tell people that and say, hey, listen, this is going to be a stressful process. We're going to have to overcome some things. But I want you to take all that and I want you to put it on my shoulders and let me take care of that. So day to day, man, I wake up, I have breakfast with my kids, go drop them off at school and then get to work. Yeah. When do you find time for the gym? Oh, the gym is in my schedule three days a week. If I can sneak in a couple extra workouts because my schedule allows it, then I'm going to do that. And that's how I actually came across you. Uh, a couple guys came to my gym, uh, the Wake Powell and the Rockies, and they was like, hey, they was like, hey, bro, we didn't even know it was over there. They saw it on your Instagram story. Hey. Like, they was like, hey, new gym or something. They showed me. It was like, new gym opens, and this was like a couple months ago. And I was like, man, that was super cool for you to do that because – not, not a lot of people, like, knew about it at the time and stuff like that. And then, like I said, after you put it up there, man, it was just, like, people just, like, kind of came through. And everybody, like, knew you. Everybody's like, oh, Noah said this. And, you know, and I really appreciate you taking and, the time. And, you know, and, that, and here's the thing is that, like, my motivation behind that was nothing besides helping somebody else achieve their goals, especially when you're doing something for the community like that, like, Fitness, health, and wellness run deep in me. Um, I spent 17 years in the industry. I'm a licensed sports nutritionist, performance coach. I, I can't even tell you any, all the certifications that I've gotten over that time. Um, and so it's it, it's a part of me. I used to own a gym in Hawaii for six years. I uh, have a fitness equipment manufacturing company. I mean, when I say I was in it, yeah. I was in it. Why? Because it gave me a platform to help people. Um, I thought I would never leave that business because of how much joy that it, how much joy that it filled me up with to be able to know that, hey, Sharon came to me. Her problem was that she said, hey, I, I need to lose 30 or 40 pounds of uh, uh, fat. Well, really, the problem was that Sharon really didn't need to lose fat. She was having problems getting pregnant. Uh, her and her husband, this is just one story out of hundreds. You know, her and her husband have been trying to have kids for for you know, seven years, tried everything. Only thing they didn't try was a a shift in lifestyle, shifted their lifestyle, shifted their movement, shifted their nutrition. She lost 110 pounds and quickly, all of a sudden, eh, it doesn't happen quick. I would say over over a course of maybe six to eight months, 
maybe a year, you know, and then all of a sudden her body weight started dropping. Her biohealth markers went up. Her body was in a positive homeostasis. And because of that, she was able to get pregnant. Now they have two kids. I mean, you talk about a life change. and I was able to, to make a positive impact in them. Um, man, it makes me emotional just thinking about it, to be honest with you. And so I take that love for what fitness does for people and my knowledge about that and my drive to help people succeed. And then it's really simple for me. I just take that those same measures and apply it to the tool of real estate. And, you know, my parents taught me the wrong thing. They said, hey, you work hard, you pay your bills, you pay off your house, um, you know, you do whatever it takes and you work hard. You work 40, 50, 60 hours a week, man. I'm from the Midwest. That's just what we do. However, it was wrong. What you do is you leverage things in your life. You leverage people and leverage people think is a bad, bad word. Dude, yeah, no, man, we are a community. Human beings are community centered beings. We will um, exist happier, healthier, um, better mental acuity when you have people around you that are going to prop you up when you're falling over. So man, real estate just gives me another area to where I can step in. I can serve people. I can help people. And when you're ready to buy or sell a house, hey, I'm here to help you out. That's it. I'm Simple. Glad, I'm glad you went there. So now it's time to kind of get into the boring stuff, right? Oh, shoot. I, I, and I hate to bore you with this. But everybody always know, wants to know, when is a good time to buy, to buy or sell your home? Like when is – and this is a question I'm sure you probably get all the time. I do. And, it's a, it, and you're probably not going to like my answer. But the best time to buy or sell a home is when you are ready to buy or sell a home. People try and time the market. People try and take all these numbers and it ends up in them sitting on the sideline for sometimes for years as real estate values appreciate. So just talking to a, a potential buyer the other day, she said, hey, you know, I don't think it's a good time. You know, interest rates are high and this, that and the other. And hey, interest rates might be high. But think about what's going to happen when interest rates drop. All of these people that are sitting on the couch are now going to jump back into the real estate market. That's going to put upward pressure on the low inventory we have. And the only thing that can happen is real estate values are going to go up. So, hey, when you are ready personally, you don't even have to be ready financially. When you are ready personally to start going down that road, that's the right time. That's bro, the, look, the way you broke that that's, down. Look, that's hey, the right need, time. We need to get a board I mean, right hey. and move this way. It, so, so let's simplify that. Yeah. Everything moves in circles of supply and demand. Every single market, financial market, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, um, cryptocurrency, our currency, the real estate market, everything fluctuates. So it, it, when it's the right time for you, that's the time to get in the market. I mean, you're not going to be able to time the market perfectly. It just doesn't happen. So rather than doing that, go buy the dang house now. You're going to save about 50 to 60K on that house because you're not competing against 30 other people who want that house that have more purchasing power than you. When the interest rates drop, it's a really simple procedure. All you do is refinance the house. So in using that technique, you get the best of both worlds. You get the lower price on the home, then you refinance when rates drop, when all these other buyers jump into the market and you're able to get the lower interest rate on the house and you're able to get the house for a less expensive price. So do you work with like lenders personally or do you just let the- I do, yeah. Um, I'm a red carpet, red carpet realtor, okay? Um, what that means is I do everything for my clients, everything. If you're out of town and your listing is live and I go to that house, there's weeds in the garden and the grass needs to be mowed. Guess what's in the back of my truck? My lawnmower, lawnmower. my work gloves. <laughs> okay. um, so that also entails lending. And yes, I have several local lenders that I partner with and I work with. And when I say partner with, we don't get anything from each other. It's just, I trust them. They answer my text messages and phone calls. 
no matter what time of day. And in this business, man, if we go look at a house at 8 p.m. Saturday night, you call me and say, hey, you want to write an offer at 9 o'clock? I need to get a hold of that lender. Yeah. And so my lending partners understand that game. And they're, boom, they're on it. I text them, hey, can I get a, an updated approval letter for X, Y, and Z property? Boom, it's in my inbox. And really when you're partnering with a lender, a lot of people are going to go shop rates and shop interest rates. So you might save like a quarter of a percent with a, you know, uh, gosh, I think the last one was a, like a uh, Loan Depot. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, you're not talking to a loan officer. You, you have a call center of 300 people. So you don't have a personal relationship with that person. Guess what? They're not answering their phone on Saturday night, which leaves me trying to fight for my clients without that other key component. No, that's good to know. So right now, at this very moment, like, what are your goals, your personal goals? Personal goals. Dang. All right. Well. You do short term, I guess. You know what I mean? You know what? Here's the thing is my, my personal goals are to help people. I mean, I keep it simple because when you start complicating things and you start saying, oh, I want to make this amount of money. Well, now your, your focus is on money. If you say, oh, I want to make this amount of commission, I want to sell this amount of homes, your focus is on homes and the income it's going to provide you. And my goal is to help as many people capitalize on the power of real estate to generate wealth because that wealth can help you fund your goals in life. It can help you send your kids to college. It can send you on a vacation. You can multiply that wealth by taking out some equity of that property to buy a rental property. And when you do that, you actually didn't take any money out of your savings account. So you can go down that investment rabbit hole. But the fact of the matter is, is that real estate is the single best wealth building tool that we have here in the United States, bar none. So you would, what would you, what, what advice would you give to a young guy trying to get into the real estate game, or even a, an older guy? Like, what would your, what would your advice be? So if somebody's looking to get into the real estate game, I would, um, first of all, I wouldn't suggest it. Uh, I'm really honest about this. It takes a very special kind of person to be successful in this business, and to be successful in this business, you're going to have to get knocked down. Uh, you're going to have to go through extreme amounts of stress, um, your clients, you, it's part of the business. And what I see a lot of people struggle with is just not being able to overcome those stressful moments with the positive mindset override. Like, listen, I can't control the interest rates. Mm -hmm. I can't control the market. I can't control what happens if I'm talking to this other broker and they do something stupid. I can't control any of that. What I pay attention to is what I can control and what I can help my clients control and cut out all the rest of the BS. So it, it, but also to piggyback on that is kind of, you know, I mean, you eat what you kill pretty much. You know what I mean? How do you guys deal with when the market fluctuates and when sales, how do you prepare for that? Or how do you, you know what I mean? Navigate your way through those, those times when things aren't optimal. It's going to happen. You plan for it. I mean, any business owner, listen, if you're out there, you're a small business owner, you 100% know you're going to go through times where you're eating steak. And then there's going to be times where you're eating ramen noodles. Right? My, so, my thing is this, though, but I also want to know what pulls you up out of that. Besides sale, besides, you know, moving homes and everything like that, what is motivating you out of, the, out of that? Like, your alarm goes off, sales haven't been the best, or, you know, and things aren't optimal. What's getting you out of bed in the morning? What's driving you? The, what drives me is my goal to help people. I mean, I will always point my, listen, my heart and my compass is solely, I've, man, I just turned 42 yesterday, the 17th, right? So I've had, I have enough wisdom now to know that what I can control is my mindset, my positivity. I can control how I treat my family. I can control how I interact with people. I can't control the market, so I don't worry about it. I can't control your interest rates, so I don't worry about it. What I can control is how I speak to people, how I relate to people, and just to let them know, hey, listen, this is not a transaction for me. This is an opportunity for me to feed my soul, and my soul craves 
the fact that, hey, if this person gets on Google and leaves me a review and says, hey, man, Noah did an awesome job. We didn't think we could get this house. Man, I post all those not to brag. Somebody else called me out on this the other day. They said, oh, yeah, so you're posting those five-star reviews. And I said, yeah, what you don't understand. <laughs> Listen, what you don't understand, I'm not posting that to brag. I'm posting that because that is 100% why I do what I do for my clients is to get that feedback. And, man, that's like the most amazing thing for me. Like, okay, go close on a million-dollar house. Yeah, go to closing. It's just like the rest of them. But to get that, um, that pat on the back. You know, from people who, who will publicly acknowledge my work ethic, my my professionalism and the understanding that I know this craft. Man, that's, I, and I don't even understand why they would say why, why. Why wouldn't you post it? I mean, it's it's exactly what you said it is. It's hey, he helped us. They took the time to put in that review. They took the time to give you your flowers. And that like that alone right there, man, is really a. Uh, all you really want at the end of the day. That's it. So you just turned 42. Yep. You look great. Oh, skin's there we go. glowing. Here we go. Got a whole bunch of energy, man. I did come across something that I want to ask you about. Is it possible to buy a house with 3000 down? Yes. It, it? It, yes. It's possible to buy a house with no money down. Um, a lot of people get a lot of people get this confused. There's so much misinformation out there, which I don't know why. It's because you are clicking on all this stuff on on the internet, clickbait things. Um, you can purchase a home with zero dollars down. It is possible. There are several different ways to do that. First time home buyer loan programs here in the state of Colorado, we have Chaffa, which is a down payment assistance program that will pay your down payment for you. It's a second loan and it's at 0%. So let me break this down. $500,000 house. Let's say you need $20,000 to close. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, no, I don't have $20,000. No problem. Can you afford the monthly payment? Well, yeah, we can afford the monthly payment. No problem. We're going to get Chaffa to come in, pay that $17,000 or $20,000 down payment. Okay. It's 0% interest which is powerful because what is that? That's leverage. You're leveraging somebody else's money for 0% interest. So let's say you borrow $20,000 and you can live in the home for as long as you want to. Don't have to pay that $20,000 back. When you refinance the home or you sell the home, you just are going to pay Chaffa back that 20,000 bucks. So they helped you leverage, you know, what could be a half a million dollar asset. A, 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 a place for your family to call home. There's Chaffa, there's Chack, there's USDA. All of these things can fit together for the right buyer to where if they wanted to, even if they had some money, if they wanted to keep it to do updates to the house, I would leverage that 0% second loan every time. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people know that. Everybody thinks that you need to have a certain amount or a certain percentage like down payment and so much misinformation out there or what other people dealt with with other you know what i mean realtors other lenders telling them this this and this and trying to get i guess the most bang for the for the buck on some stuff and listen if someone's going to give me money to buy a house take it <laughs> take it take it and, there, and and here's the thing those are only like four programs that i mentioned yeah. there's a lot more and it's really easy. Like a lot of my clients, the very first conversation, you know, if you're sitting here watching this and you're like, man, I was thinking about buying a house. What, what, what do I do? First of all, follow me on Instagram, real.estate.hippie. Second thing you do, send me a message. My cell phone number's on there. Text me, call me. I'm a very reachable person. We'll talk about everything. Third thing you do is you apply with one of my <clears throat> preferred lenders because they're going to take that application and everybody doesn't want to fill out the application. They think it's like a test. Yeah. Like, oh, I, well, my credit's not the, my my credit's not the best. I, I I don't know if I want to fill out the application. Listen, I've worked with hundreds of people. Nobody's credit's the best. We all have debt as part of the deal, right? My college debt, medical debt, credit card debt. I was silly and bought a brand new car debt. Um, you know, <laughs> like everybody has that. So rather than worrying about that, fill out the application, get the information to my team. And what we will do is dive into that information and do the work for you. You do nothing. You, it's not a pass or a fail test. 
When you fill out the application, you pass. It's that simple because my team and I will work with you, whether it is you're buying a home that next month. I've literally worked with a family for five years, five years working on their credit, coaching them on how to get rid of debt. Hey, we bought this new car. We really love it. Well, hey, it's stopping you. That liability is stopping you from buying a house. Sell the dang thing. Okay, take it back to the dealership. Get something that's going to work. Buy a nice, you know, used vehicle off of Craigslist. No, is it glamorous? No, it's not. But it's going to get you in that house, right? It's going to get you there. Fast forward, we finally got these people, got their credit up. Wonderful family, got their credit up, figured out their income, what they can get approved for. Man, we're out shopping for houses, got this family a house. They told me when they met me that they were never going to be able to buy a house. I took that as a personal challenge. Um Challenge accepted. They're in this house. They love it. And now, guess what? So that was three years ago when they closed on that house. Now they have $150,000 of equity in their home that they can use to buy other properties. Now they can pull that money out and go buy a car that they wanted in the first place. Yeah. You know, so but they just need to sacrifice for that little bit of time to get to that. You know, it's funny. It, it's. I find that the more people that I coach, the more people I talk to, we're very short-minded creatures. I mean, we want that instant gratification. I just got a pay raise of, you know, 400 bucks a month. Now I can go afford that new car. Well, let's stop for a second. Let's understand why you want that new car. Why? Well, gosh, I never really thought about that. It's shiny. It's new. I want to drive something. Okay, why? Well, I guess because I, I want to post some good pictures on Instagram. Like, okay, why? Because I, I think it might help me attract the opposite sex. Okay, why is that important to you? You can keep going and going and going down that why until you actually drill into the silliness behind that. The root of the whole, the root of the whole thing is like, hey, I feel like this might make me more desirable and I really would like – you know, a partner in my life. Well, guess what? Any partner you want in your life, if they're there because you have a nice car, you don't want them anyway. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Great conversation. You know what I mean? Hey, anybody who wants more information on Noah, hey, you can reach him at, uh, say, the Instagram. Instagram, real.estate.hippie. Like I said, go follow me, send me messages. I literally, I answer every single message. Uh, you ask me anything, my cell number's on there, call me, text me, listen, I'm just here to help you out. That's all there is to it. If I can help you some way, whether it's nutritionally, lifestyle, uh, building wealth through the power of real estate, man, information is free. I'll give you everything. You don't pay me nothing. I heard that, man. He's, the whole, he's a total package, man. You know, physical, spiritual, everything, man. So reach out to him and anything that you need, man. I'm sure he'll answer your question. Like I said, I'll put his information at the bottom of this. Uh, you can find this podcast now on Spotify as well. So on YouTube and Spotify, definitely check out his videos on Instagram. Some funny stuff, man. He keeps the content coming. He's great. Also, too, come on down to 1610 Main Street, uh, the weight pile in the Rockies. Don't forget the squat competition is this Saturday from uh, 11 to 2. And we're going to try to figure out who's the strongest, the king and queen of the Rockies when it comes to squats, man. King Penny Podcast. We got Noah. We're out of here, man. Follow us. Check us out. It's been real, man. You Thank guys you, guys. See ya.